Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the com video. We're going to be discussing NVIDIA. The CEO of NVIDIA, Jen Song Huang, has stated, rather factually actually, that the latest mobile graphics chips from NVIDIA, those which you'd find in, say, laptops, ultra-thin laptops, are significantly more powerful than next-generation consoles. He pleads his case that if you're looking for a gaming device, and more specifically are interested in, in virtual reality, then surely it would be better to go with his solution, his company's solution. Now, we're going to get into my thoughts and opinions in this in just a second, but first of all, I'm going to read out his quote, and I'm going to give you some statistics in terms of actual raw performance numbers, and then I'm going to give my thoughts and opinions. Sound good? Well, that's what we're doing anyway. Unfortunately, this is not a two-way conversation. I really wish it was, but unfortunately, this is what we've got. Anyway, I appreciate you bringing up the notebooks work we did. Maxwell, the GPU architecture that we created and the craftsmanship of the GPUs we made so incredible that it's fully possible for a notebook to deliver the kind of performance as a desktop and our timing was timed, bit of an odd sentence, so that people who enjoy VR with a notebook can finally do it. And so, the latest generation of notebooks with the GTX 980 are amazing. I mean, and this is probably an important bit, they are so many more times more powerful than a games console. It fits in a smaller space than a games console, and it can drive virtual reality. Everything you want it to do, every game you want to play, is possible on that thin laptop. And so, the enthusiasm behind our launch with the GTX 980 has been really, really fantastic. I appreciate you recognising it. Now, before we get into my thoughts and opinions on this, I do want to give the, the facts in terms of raw performance. So PS4 is 1.84 teflops, the Xbox One is 1.31 teflops. We are referring here, just so you're aware, to the raw GPU performance. The GTX 980 for the notebook, so that would be for the mobile solutions, the desktop solutions obviously suck up more power and put out more heat, but they are higher performance, but the GTX 980 in this specific instance is 4.6 teflops of computing performance. Now the reason this is important in his mind is you have over two and a half times the raw GPU performance to drive virtual reality games. Now there are some problems of course with these types of solutions, specifically while obviously they do have a considerably higher performance level than a console, their price is also to match, so they are not cheap. And this is obviously a massive problem with mobile technology versus a desktop. Now you can actually build a really kick-ass PC. And I'm probably actually going to cover this in the not too distant future with actually some really cheap PCs because I realize that not everyone has the budgets for like a ridiculously powerful system. Uh, particularly at the moment because Skylake is taking the piss with the price increase. I mean, honestly, the 6700K is really just absolutely ludicrous in terms of pricing. It's like over 400 great British pounds currently, which is absolutely ridiculous considering the performance increase over, let's say, the 4790K. But the benefit, of course, of the PlayStation 4 is it's fairly cheap um, in comparison. For example, you can get a pretty good bundle in the UK, once again, for around 300 Great British Pounds. It's very hard to argue with that. So yes, the laptops or what have you are considerably more powerful, but you've got the screen size, sorry, the actual pricing to worry about. And one can argue, well, yeah, you've got to worry about PlayStation VR, but it's not like you're getting, let's say for the sake of argument, the Oculus Rift for free. I mean, it's possible maybe if your friend gave it to you, but generally speaking, that could then be applied to the PlayStation 4. So this is obviously a massive problem. Hardware and raw performance are great PR numbers, but you do have to start taking pricing into account. In my opinion, anyway, it's better for him to have actually started to compare it to let's say a desktop based GPU solution. If he wanted to make the comparison versus a mid-range GPU, then that would be a fair enough comparison because the pricings are a lot of pricing, prices are a lot more comparable. And one can argue that you can get even a mid-range GPU, let's just say for the sake of argument, a GTX 960 if you wanted to stay with NVIDIA. 
and it's got a lot of power behind it. You could get that, maybe an i3 for sake of argument, a cheapish motherboard from MSI, gigabyte, someone who's trustable, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and you'd be okay. Now, I'm not necessarily advocating a GTX 960. I personally would rather go with maybe an R9 380, potentially the 380X, depending on the pricing when it's finally introduced. Obviously, we've got tentative pricing at the moment. But let's just be totally and utterly honest right now. Performance is a big deal. We all like to make out the, you know, resolution and that stuff doesn't matter but in my opinion it's actually hurting Microsoft not because resolution necessarily makes a big difference in many cases like for the sake of argument let's say that you're running at 900p and another game's running at 1080 you can definitely tell in certain scenes and especially particularly if you're quite close to the screen like obviously when I'm doing graphics comparisons I'm looking at a fairly reasonably sized screen, quite close, and in many cases, I'm zoomed in. So yeah, it's quite easy for me to tell you, well, yeah, the edges of the texture are a little bit, you know, more noticeable on the Xbox One version. <clears throat> Frame rate, of course, is a big deal. Like, let's say, for example, one version is more stable. It holds 30 FPS considerably more noticeably than, let's say, the other version. That's, that's fine. Resolution, not so much. The problem is, it's a PR nightmare for Microsoft in many cases. It it means that for people's mentality, it's very difficult for people to mentally say that I'm going to deal with worse versions of games. Which, of course, you are doing when it comes to cross-platform. If one runs at 900p and one runs at 1080, that's a bit of a thing. However, to then extend that to the PC, yeah, you've got that virtual reality solution without a question, unequivocally. The PC solution will, of course, be better with virtual reality. However, if you, I'll let you do your own Googling, go to Dell or Amazon or wherever you feel comfortable and look at the price of the GTX 980-based cards, they're not really comparable. Uh, and we're, once again, referring to primarily the mobile-based solutions. You can't really compare that to once again a PlayStation 4 console I think that's a bit of a silly statement but I would however be completely and utterly behind if he was to then state something along the lines of well if you take a GTX 960 or equivalent that would be that would be an arguable statement but obviously in those cases you don't have like you know two and a half or three times or four times levels of performance increase over the PlayStation 4 although it is still a healthy increase in performance those are my opinions anyway. But, with that said, I'm going to get going. Currently, Fallout is installing next to me on the PlayStation 4. No particular reason we're using the PS4 version, other than it's just literally the version that uh, came to hand first. We'll be playing the PC version as well at some point or another, but I couldn't really be bothered to play around with the drivers because I have to update my GPU drivers, so a little out of date, and it's a whole thing. So I figured, yeah, the PlayStation 4 version is closer at hand today. But, with that said, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.